and um, you know continuing the process of uh, uh, making sure our players who have been injured or who are recovering from injuries um, are getting the care they need and the rest they need and not uh, subjecting them to uh, to risk and so uh, these decisions are uh, you know are based on process not on the results of the previous night's games. So we uh, we're just you know following the process, and and uh, it's important that we keep these guys healthy uh, with the playoffs coming up. Um, so we're just making the wise decision. I mean, in in general, um, you know, Otto and Clay are are not going to play. Back to backs. I always uh, reserve the right to to play them because um, what if one of them gets ejected five minutes into the game? You know um, that actually happened. Well, there wasn't an, an ejection, but uh, we had a game in Milwaukee this year. Where we were down thirty eight at half, and um, Andre and and Otto were both scheduled to take the next night off in Chicago. Um, they had each played about seven minutes. I went to them and I'd say, I said, what do you think about playing tomorrow? And they said, I'm all for it. Talk to the training staff. So we played it. So there's, there's stuff that can happen, but in general, um, you know, Otto, given his injury history, the last two years, Clay, same thing. Uh, and then Draymond just coming back from his own injury, um, back to backs, uh, are, uh, the, the, they are vulnerable. Uh, they're more vulnerable playing a back to back than they would be otherwise. How do you balance the stress and the urgency to make a decision based on health? There's no balance to be made. You, you make the decision based on health. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's just got a lot of confidence that, that has come from, you know, playing for several years now in the league and, and uh, figuring out the speed and the angles and um, understanding what's happening before, you know, b before the play unfolds. Uh, all the things that come with experience are, are factoring in now. And he really works for his confidence. Um, he's uh, He's one of our most diligent workers at the gym getting shots up, uh, you know, working in the, in the training room. Um, and I think he, he has earned the right to, uh, to be playing the way he's playing, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, he's, he's been great. And we uh, obviously really need him right now without Steph, especially. Uh, I think he's in that mix now. Um, I think just the versatility that he brings, um, you know, that, that's what separates to me the best defenders in the league. Um, is the uh, the versatility to guard multiple positions, multiple actions, uh, to roam and protect uh, teammates. Um, he does all of that. Uh, he can guard one through five on switches. Uh, he is absolutely elite. And uh, it was really fun coaching him in the Olympics. Just a, a great guy, great teammate. Um, and uh, the tandem of, of Draymond and Bam was really something to watch, you know, being able to uh, employ one and then the other, um, and not just defensively, you know, they're pretty special in terms of uh, their ability to push the ball in transition, kind of play a point center role. Uh, very, very unique players. Really that far away. 
Remember, remember back in the day when uh, colleges would hire the father of uh, Danny Manning, perhaps, or the you know the fathers of uh, touted recruits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, is that still going on? Yeah, that's the only reason I I hired uh, Spo on the staff. I just want him to bring Bam. That's 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 the only reason. He brings no value other than that. It's just uh, just as long as you bring Bam, you're good. I should say apologies to. Ed Manning, that was an unfair shot. Uh, we've been for the last uh, 18 games, you know, we're six and 12, uh, we're 27th in the league in defense there. And, um, I think um, it's a combination of um, kind of breakdowns in multiple areas. You know, our transition defense has been bad. Um, we are we aren't guarding the ball well. You know, we're uh, getting beat one on one. Uh, we're as a result we're rotating and then getting beat at the three point line. And uh, it, it's this is just not a. Uh, a, a the same team that it, that we were the first two months of the year. Now, most of those games have been without Draymond, and I have so much faith and belief in Draymond that I think those numbers are going to change. But it requires all of us to, uh, you know, to bring back uh, a mentality that we had earlier and, and cover up some of those loose ends. Uh, we, our philosophy is to, to take away the paint um, and then to recover out to shooters and challenge, uh, challenge shooters from there. But um, you got to be able to do one. And if you're, if you're not doing one of them, uh, then you're in big trouble. And we've been giving up paint points and uh, uh, three point shots. Uh, when we've been good the first two months of the season, um, we, uh, we were the best in the league at, protecting the rim, you know, uh, I think we had the lowest field goal percentage against us in terms of rim, uh, rim attempts and, you know, Draymond and Loon both were fantastic with that. Um, but that has really dropped. Uh, like I said, teams are attacking the rim on us and, and we've, that's an area we've just got to get better with. Uh, I think they're they're doing well. You know, Draymond's only had two two games back. I think maybe three, um, but um, he's coming along well. And um, and uh, Clay is um, Clay's doing great. You know, his minutes are are no problem now. His conditioning, his wind, um, you know, the, the rhythm it, it comes and goes. But that's to to be expected after two and a half years uh, of absence. So just have to uh, you know keep going and and. Uh, Keep working, and things are gonna things are gonna get better. All right, thanks.